Um, Angela. The sky was crystal blue as the young woman parked her car in the lonely lot. She quickly strolled over a footbridge that crossed a pond and headed towards the nature path. In her hand was a water bottle. An explosion of color covered the hillside brought on by recent rain. The young woman didn't notice the wildflower being crushed under her feet as she made her way up to the trail. The birds' joyous songs fell on deaf, deaf ears. The woman's pace increased as the trail led into the woods, and even the glorious blooming dogwoods failed to get her attention. Nothing would slow her down now. Her heart was pounding, and her breath came in short puffs, and excitement building with each step. As she pressed on towards a fork in the path, she glanced down at the water bottle, and a little smile crept across her face. She took the left fork, leading deeper into the woods. Soon, she thought, soon the pain would be gone. As she approached another fork in the path, a loud snap in the brush a few feet off to the right broke her through her thoughts. She paused, turning to look. Nothing. She continued on. Before long, she heard movement near the path just ahead. She paused again, but could see nothing. A curious deal, deer. She reassured herself as she moved on. The trees were taller and closer now, blocking out the clear blue sky. She was almost there. She stopped and drew in a deep, deep breath. Leaving the path, she headed down the side of the hill toward a small clearing and rock formation below. Struggling to keep from sliding in the mud, she grasped branches and rocks with one hand while clutching the bottle with the other. Suddenly, an ominous dark figure darted behind a tree. She froze, staring into the dark woods. It was still early afternoon. Back in the parking lot, the sun was dancing on the pond, but here in the woods, the gloom hung thick, blocking out the light. The young woman squinted, trying to see here. Again, nothing. Just my imagination, she muttered. The shadows playing tricks on that. She continued making her way down the hill, working to keep her footing still clinging to the bottle. Reaching the bottom, she glanced back up the hill, just in time to see a tall figure draped in a long trench coat darting behind a tree a few yards up. She gasped. The figure was between her and the path. The young woman's eyes darted around, trying to get her bearings. Disoriented by the trees and hills, she had no idea which way to go. She ducked behind the nearest tree, hoping the intruder would move on. As she leaned into the tree, she strained to listen for what seemed an eternity. Hearing nothing, except her own heart pounding in her ears. She stepped out from behind the tree, almost bumping into the tall, dark figure wearing a trench coat and hideous Halloween mask. A scream escaped her lips as she dropped the bottle she had been clinging to. She looked wildly toward the hill, then back to the figure. It didn't move. It seemed to be expecting her to laugh. She peered into the eye holes of the mask. She stood frozen for a few moments, then glanced down at the bottle on the ground, then back into the eyes of the mask, and calmly reached into her jacket pocket and pulled out a pistol. A single gunshot broke the silence of the dark woods. <laughs> I, I'm also wondering, this is, can I tell them your name? This is Keenan, Kit's grand, and Tony's grandson, Angela and Lee's son. Okay, he thought I wanted him to draw something. <laughs> what? I wouldn't have even done that, even if she'd asked me, no. Okay, here's where the first one. <clears throat> number 17. Okay, who's got number 17? Oh, 
<laughs> okay, that's a wine toad, and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's jewelry for the wine glasses so that you can oh, tell your glasses yeah. apart. Oh, yeah. And that's handmade by Dallas Vinyl. Villain no, no, way, over. 